Welcome back to the Virch Production Studios for another episode of Pardon Our Promotion. I'm Scott, and I'm here with Lindsay and Bob. How are you guys today? Wonderful, Scott. Good, Thanks. good. Today we're going to talk about running effective live in-game promotions, um, and specifically the elements uh, within those promotions and, and how we do that, the certain nuances and the things that we're going to look at um, to make those things really pop and hit their hardest. So I want to start off, and we we visited this in one of our shows, but um, let's just remind everyone, what is an element, Bob? A game element? Yes. It's a certain amount of time in a break in a game, okay? And, and that game element encompasses all the things that has to happen throughout the facility, on the video board, where the mascot is, where the promo team is, where if there's talent, contestants, where they are, props and supplies. An element, when well-scripted, can be multiple columns wide, including the, like catchphrases and PA throwdowns and et cetera. We'll get into the depths of it, but that's essentially the game element. Okay. For this, I want to focus uh, specifically on an entertainment element, something um, that involves contestants or fans, something designed um, to uh, have a funny payout, if you will, at the end. Um, what are the specific components that make that up? Before we get even started on it, yeah. I'm going to bring one thing up. When, when in, in, in the olden days, <laughs> two decades ago, three decades ago, whatever it is, people would sell half innings or they'd sell an entire like you know, stoppages of play in hockey, okay? Instead of selling a certain amount of time for any particular thing. And there's still some of that old school stuff going on today. So before we even get started, your game element should be, I'm gonna use an inning break for an example. It should be 60 seconds or 30 seconds or 15 seconds. So because you got a, a minute and a half, bit, depending on the pace of, uh, pace of play clocks that are being introduced across the country, you only have a certain amount of time and you really shouldn't give, you shouldn't sell to a sponsor an entire half. That's, you're, you're leaving money on the table. You should say, we're gonna be able to do your game element in 60 seconds or in 30 seconds which leaves the sponsorship department more time to sell other stuff within that half inning. Sure, sure, okay. Um, so, you know, you mentioned timing is a, is a big part of the element. What other things, Lindsay, did you, um, with, within the element that were a, a critical part of said element? Yeah, so, well, when we talk about timing, right? So how long it takes, mm -hmm. um, also comedic timing. You know, if we're doing an entertainment element and it's supposed to be funny, um, you want to make sure that you get that that timing right. Um, get the punchline in. So yes. many people rush that. Yes. You know, because again, we're at 60 seconds, there's a countdown clock, there's people in your ears, get off the field or whatever. And they forget that they have to just nourish that punchline and they have to be calm out there in the field in order for it to hit correctly. Yeah. If you see a stand-up comedian, they'll say a joke. They don't rush into the next joke. They let the audience respond. Right. Yeah. What, um, what are some of the other, other things that are important to a comedic element or, or an on-field? If we stick with the half innings, what are some of the other parts of that element that we need to think about? Yeah, so physically, you're going to need contestants. Um, whether that contest, those contestants be picked from the crowd, or if they're planned ahead, so if they're kind of scripted in, if they're they're plants as as we call them sometimes. So if what that means is if you pull somebody from your front office staff, or from the game day staff, or or they've just already planned it ahead of time, um, you have your contestants, you have your props. Um, then also you have your video board elements, you have your audio elements. Um, and anything else that I well, uh, I'm going to point out contestants. In a brave new world, we call them talent. Yeah. Because we're going to be casting those contestants because mm -hmm. we don't want to take our sponsor and our show and put it in the hands of contestants mm -hmm. or somebody that doesn't want to really bring the message across or the punchline, as mm -hmm. you said earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you mean by casting those? Um, well, there's a certain, well, let's talk about the, one of the fa famous things is a dizzy bat race. Sure. Right? In, in minor league baseball. And even though a lot of teams out there know how to do that dizzy bat race, some people cast the contestants incorrectly. Well, that's, uh, that's Mark Cuban calling. <laughs> well, Mark, I'm on a podcast right now, so uh, just chill out. I'll call you later, tell you about your show and all that. Thanks. 
<laughs> so, um, so as we're talking about, um, no, are we talking about contestants? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Casting them. Talent. Talent. Casting them. That was all like a setup. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. It hit it. The timing. It <laughs> hit the timing. <laughs> well, so the Dizzy Bat Race, uh, some people cast, it's supposed to be where people get dizzy and fall down. Mm -hmm. You can't cast a little kit because they have a tremendous sense of balance. You cast a drunk, older person. Mm -hmm. Now they're a little bit inebriated and they will take a dive for you really comically, right? That's, yeah. ca that's casting. Um, there's probably others. Have you cast anybody when you were writing scripts that comes to mind? Uh, yeah, so I mean, similar to you know what, what you said with, with younger children, um, you know, if, if uh, we've done something before where, you know, they've, they're on the script, they were supposed to run to second base, and instead, you know, we've casted them and then coached them even further to do something like run off into center field and act like the element's getting away. With a little kid, though, that works great because, you know, everyone in the stands feels like, oh, this is going wrong. Look at the kid. He's so cute. He's running away. But, you know, we in, in reality, we expected that and we told him to do that. So. Yeah, that's a great one. I, I the air guitar cam, you know, you have a, a, a dad against his kid and the dad kind of plays. And then you coach the kid up to like just mm -hmm. totally rock it like mm -hmm. yeah. like a total rock star behind the head and everything else that he does. And that bring yeah, it, it, it turns on the audience. Yeah. It's a great laugh. Yeah, I think that goes into what we were talking about, like almost like those plants or scripting the element ahead of time. To the fans, it looks like something is going wrong or right. or that that wasn't supposed to happen. But everyone involved knows that it did happen. We had uh, an on-field element that was kids running across the field um and it was like any kid in the ballpark who wanted to run across the field could do that at this specific time in in between the innings um and we had one kid just kind of like we were like hey you're just going to kind of go crazy and then we had talked with one of the players in the outfield so like we had kind of mastered this whole thing to where like the fans thought that this kid was just like running around like staying you know on the field when he wasn't supposed to be and then the player came in ran picked him up and like oh, ran and cool. like carried him off so and we got that idea because it accidentally happened one time right so so that 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 happens sometimes with live entertainment like you just have things go differently but it ends up working out for you in the and, end yeah so, and you can build it off yeah your, we'll get in another podcast episode about meetings but in the post-production meeting you go over this mm -hmm. that was awesome mm -hmm. let's do it again not tomorrow because it was mm -hmm. just play we'll do it in a couple of home stands yeah right? we can do it later pull that thing off again and set it up yeah so what about uh props and supplies like you know how do you gather them what do you gather you know i think it depends on the element obviously but you know you always my experience has been you always want to accentuate things, right? So, for example, if we have a race, we need to have a finish line. You know, you need to have visually something that the crowd can react to that they're finishing, not just someone standing there or, um, you know, your mascot standing there. So what's the finish line? What do you do for a visual finish line? Uh, it could be a ribbon. It could be caution tape. It could be something stretched across. And then what's even better is if when they cross, you have like a confetti cannon shoot out or something like that. Just that to, groundskeepers must love. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Groundskeepers <laughs> love the promotions and production department for sure. We're not everyone's best friend at <laughs> <all> the time. <laughs> that, if any ground, no groundskeepers comment on this podcast, please. Well, here's a, a perfect example. Grab that. Mm. Look at that. So if you're on field, do you want to have a ring this size or do you have a yes. ring that size yeah. right yeah. there? Do you want to have money the size of money, which is six inches long, or do you want really mm -hmm. big money? Right. Yeah. So the audience, it's almost like the old theater. Uh, you, they had oversized props in the theater so that the people in the back rows could see what was going on. And it's kind of that same way. All your actions have to be bigger, mm -hmm. bigger, all big hands, the, bi the big actions, big races, big finishes. Another prop and supply is that I saw just recently in Spokane was they put sponsor logos down. Mm -hmm. Even though you have a video board and we'll get into like how the video board can yeah. accentuate this. 
But they actually had the sponsor logos as part of the action mm -hmm. on the oh, field. Genius, like, or yeah. it was a setup, like an A-frame, or it might have been part of the finish line, or they might have been carrying something that was sponsor related. Mm -hmm. it, add, it adds to that element big time for the sponsors. Yeah. What, a, what, a, what about video boards? You mentioned that, but what, what kind of, you know, I've done things like overlays and, you know, intro slides, but what else? And, and ex maybe we can talk about what those graphics are a little bit more on the video board. Yeah, what do you think, Liz? Yeah, I think just anything that adds that little touch to the element, whether that be an overlay, you know, if, if you have your knocker balls and they collide, then maybe putting an overlay that's like boom or bang or, you know, oh, anything yeah. like that, just small details like that, it really adds to the effect because what we're doing down on the field, it's very visual. You know, so we want all the props to be big. We want everything down there to be big and visual, but you also have the video board that is very visual as well. So there are there are a lot of things that you can you can do to add add to that. And the video board should have, you know, a big sponsor look visual and sponsoring the Dizzy Battery it should be full screen visual down to like a, maybe spin down and swipe down mm -hmm. to a logo in the corner that says that and maybe the logo in the corner is spinning. Mm -hmm. I mean we we're obviously there to entertain, but we're also there to get, you know, this, it's dual purpose, entertain mm -hmm. an audience and, and provide a little home for the sponsor. So if that's prominent throughout the whole thing, and, and of course, and then as the, as it wraps, it should almost go backwards. It should go back to full screen as it wraps oh, as yeah. a PA right. announcer. Yeah. Uh, and then some teams miss that. They just kind of go on to the next thing, but really we should bookend it, right? Including kind of like, how do you, how do you have the, some teams have a PA person and the host and there should be a way that the, you know, how do you send out? What, what in your history, what did you do for Sorry, uh, the I'm, PA I'm, guy and the host? I'm taking notes over here. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Email it to everybody. <laughs> um, no, so you're, you know, you're, you're on field, uh, is going to be one of the most important pieces your on-field host that is of of any element or or anything um they're the ones that are going to hold the hands of the audience as we experience this element together so whether they're part of it and a comedic relief in the element i think back to um, one of the really popular on-field games that i've done is the um uh what's the name of it i can't think of the name of it right now but it involves a toddler um toddler payoff and what they do is um, you have your promo team and they have, each one has an item. They have three of them. They have uh, candy, one of them has a stuffed animal and the other one has a hundred dollar bill. And we all sit them down and we take the toddler, put it right in front and let the toddler choose what happens. Now, 90% of the time, probably 95% of the time, they don't choose the money. They go for the candy or the stuffed animal, which is funny in its own right. But we, ha I had the host come in then after the toddler took the stuffed animal or the candy, or even if they didn't select one, and just go in and swipe the $100 bill, put it in their pocket and walk away. Nice. So um, there's a payoff then at the end, in addition to what's already happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, and with your on-field hosts, obviously they're very important. Um, Cause you can plan out a live on-field or you know in-game element um, and it's just not always going to go the way that, mm -hmm. that you either had it in your head, um, the way that you practiced, because once you get a live audience there, it might just go differently. So there, there are those times where you thought that a specific aspect of the game was going to be really funny and, you know, maybe you're not getting a crowd reaction. So then in that situation, you would want your on-field host to kind of, you know, maybe make a joke about it or, or if the race is going really slow, like, oh, it's a slow one out here tonight, you know, like, let's give them, right. like, let's get them going. Like, let's give them some cheers. Like, let's get them involved. Um, so yeah, your on-field host can really, like you say, narrate it, um, especially in those times of almost emergency whenever things aren't going the right way. And, uh, and I remember you telling me about when you were hosting, how you use the PA person to intro you. Let's send it down to Lindsay for the blank sponsor something race, right? And it's kind of the voice of, from, voice of God, voice yep. from the sky, making something happen. And kind of, again, that bookend. Right, mm -hmm. and then there's a report. Hey, thanks, Sam, or whoever the PA guy is. And here I am with little Junior here and this person here. And then at the end, of course, and now back up to you. And then the person, the PA guy, does that kind of the blank. Make sure you go out to that sponsor's place to get your whatever it is. So it kind of it leaves that 
blank that reed, that kind of dry reed upstairs in the PA mm -hmm. room. Sure. Yeah. And the host is being the entertainer. And that's a big thing. Uh, the other thing is the whole, you know, we're, I, I think you want to write something down in your notes. Yeah, we, yeah, should do, we should do a podcast on what it is to be a great host. I think right. that should be a big deal. And, and the reason why I bring that up right now is because a host is a host, not an MC. Mm -hmm. The host is, is talent down there, but he shouldn't be the primary. He should be subservient to the people that are, he's with and the sponsor and the whole action. He should just host everybody. And so that the rapport between the PA announcer and the host, the rapport between the host and the kids or the, or the talent contestants, getting their names, where you're from, have you been to a game before, mm -hmm. that type of feel-good stuff, that love that the host can give to the contestants is going to come back from the contestants and from the crowd itself. They're yeah. going to really enjoy it a lot more. One thing we haven't talked about yet, which I think is one of the most important parts of an element or a live, on, live element, is music mm -hmm. and audio. And, you know, I used to, you know, if we go back to the half-inning example, um, you know, we'd end the half inning playing a certain track. And then when we started or when the on-field host started introducing the next element, we went to went into a new track, something probably more specific or more applicable to the on-field element that we're doing. And then once, you know, if it's a race, once the race started, we're doing, uh, we're going into another track and then we're adding audio and sound bites and things yeah, like that. Like sound bites, the bang, the whoops, yeah. mm -hmm. the Benny Hill. I think you mentioned that mm -hmm. when we were working with Fresno last week. Mm -hmm. The Benny Hill theme song, of course, is fantastic. Yeah. There are a lot of different yeah. on fields. Yeah, yeah, finding those songs that are themed out. You know, if you're doing a, a smile cam or you're doing something related to teeth, like using those songs. And I say that because one time, like we would we would do a smile cam and we would play the shiny teeth and me song from the fairly odd parents and people loved it and one game there was something going on with our um, audio and they couldn't get that song playing fast enough so they just had selected another song um and we had people saying like where are the shiny teeth and me like where is it and i think that it just sets it sets the tone you know it it just adds that small detail again yeah. just on on top of it yeah I like to talk about, I keep saying bookend, but there's actually a lead-in before that mm -hmm. that a lot of teams miss. Mm -hmm. So again, I kind of go back to that full half inning. The send down to the promotion is sometimes early and people are still setting up. Mm -hmm. The contestants are not there yet and it's like, you don't want the, you don't want the audience to start looking at Set up. something going on where they're still assembling and, there's, and contestants are still going down to the field of play. It's a horrible way to start a promotion. We should divert, just like any magician show, we should divert people's attention to something else while that's being set up. Mm -hmm. It could be another host, another area of the, of the facility in front of another camera, another wireless, or even just in front of a dugout camera, just doing an interview of a player, mm -hmm. divert their attention while this is being set up. Or of course it could be a video, uh, some sort of video promo on, on a sure. video board that's they're all watching then. Now it's time to send it down to when they're ready. Mm -hmm. And then when they're coming up, we don't want the audience watching them break down. Yeah. We want to divert out of that. Now it's onto this and you send them somewhere else during the rest of the inning break. Yeah. Yeah, that's genius. That's a good call. Anything else from a uh, on-field elements? Standpoint? I think we actually have a whole nother podcast. Yeah, we probably. wrote down so many things before this podcast. <laughs> we're already at 19 minutes. We try to keep these brief so you know people can listen to it on the way into work or whatever during a quick lunch break. So I think we probably should wrap and go back to on on you know on playing surface promotions part two sometime yeah, later. Yeah, part two. Yeah. 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 So part two coming your way <laughs> soon. But as always, guys, send us your comments. If you have any, if you have any questions, if you want to share an on-field element that you did that you really liked and how you made it um, even more amazing, please do so in the comments. Uh, until next time, it's all about your fans. Thanks, guys.